Usually you know me as Riddle the Rat, but at this time, it is time to put away the fedora. It is time to put away the ears. Mwah. For today, I am Hinlo the Chicken, and I'm here to teach you about the great world of backyard chicken keeping. Now, I've been keeping chickens for about 10 years. I enjoy their company. I enjoy the little personalities. I enjoy the eggs, but it is a bit of a handful. So, hopefully you will enjoy this video and gain some perspective on whether backyard chicken keeping is for you. The most important decision that you will make in getting backyard chickens is what kind of breed to get. What kind of chicken? Uh, I have a chicken junk journal that was created for me by Lady R's of Shadowcrest. So I'm going to use some of the little pieces of photos that she's put in there for me. Worldwide, there are over 500 different breeds of chicken and they are, these are just a few. So what kind to get? You know, part of that's going to be what can you find locally, of course, but then what is your purpose? Some people get fancier chickens because they're involved with the show business, and those are going to be the professionals, of course. Show business. No, I meant um, chicken shows. Chicken show. Well, show business, chicken shows. I remember seeing a chicken show at the Georgia State Fair before and just being amazed at all the different chickens that they had. Most people get backyard chickens for the eggs and sometimes as pets. So let's talk about eggs real quick. The general rule with eggs is the fancier the breed, the less eggs you're probably going to get. Some chickens may give you one egg a week. I have one fancy breed that's probably going to give me that. And then you've got some that may hit you with one or two eggs a day, egg laying machines. The egg laying machines that I've had are white leghorn. They're blindingly white chickens, and these guys, um, like I said, they, they will keep you in eggs. Now myself, I much prefer fresh eggs from my own chickens than uh, eggs from the store. The reason being, the biggest reason is they taste better. A fresh egg has a better flavor. The eggs in the store are older and they've lost flavor over time. Now, something to be aware of, and I'll have to wash my hand afterwards, is that eggs, of course, could be um, have bacteria on the outside, so you want to treat them the same way you would the body of your chicken when you're holding a chicken. Keep your hands away from your mouth, your eyes, your nose, all of those safety standards that we take. Do not wash your eggs before you're ready to use them. You do keep them in the fridge, but don't wash them. They actually have a protective layer to keep them fresher longer. So your egg will be better if you don't wash them. If you wash them, you're taking a risk of allowing some of the bacteria to get inside of the egg. You might have an egg go bad. I've never had that happen, but I don't wash my eggs until right before I use the egg. Some people believe that brown eggs are going to give you higher quality, nutritional, more flavorful eggs. Uh, I haven't seen any difference. I do see a difference in the size depending on what kind of chicken I have. But the flavor and nutritional quality, I don't really see anything about that being real. So um, I'm not really picky about the color of my eggs. There are some that are called, what do they call them? Easter, Easter egg, chick, Easter egg chickens. They give colorful eggs like brownish or greenish. Those are going to be fancier breeds and you're going to get less eggs. Like that white leghorn will give you a white egg every day all year. So that will keep you rolling in the eggs. I also keep chickens for pets and some people do that. Uh, again, for the eggs, for all this information, it's worth it to look into the different breed and breed uh, qualities. Some chickens are calmer, for instance, um, like silkies. They're calmer chickens and more likely to sit in your lap. 
Other chickens, the white leghorns they talked about, they're flighty. Uh, they're very reactive. Um, they tend to be more aggressive chickens. I've had a couple of them would just have an attitude with me and peck me or chase me around a little bit. I'm not scared of chickens, so to me it was actually kind of funny. <laughs> I don't have any aggressive chickens right now, but I've got, they may happen at any time where I might get a new one. This one decides to be aggressive. Chickens are different. I've got two white leghorns out there. They've shown no aggression at all. They're, they're curious birds. Um, if you have chickens, they'll probably follow you around the yard uh, because they, they're interested in what you're doing because you might give them a treat or whatever you're doing, a bug might jump out. They're always looking for the bugs. So breeding for breeding, fancy breeding, eggs, for pets, but then also for meat birds. Some people do keep their own chickens in the backyard for meat, and I respect people that do that. The life of a factory farm chicken is horrible. I have had one of the meat birds before. This is one grown up called Cordish, because it was in a bin of other chicks at the local hardware store and they asked me to take it in because no one was going to buy it. In this bin of cute little chicks there was this bloated pink fuzzy dried out thing. Well I took the bird in it turned out to be a Cornish chick. What that means it's been bred for meat. It hasn't been bred for flavor. Um, it hasn't been bred for health for God's sake. They've been bred to develop huge breasts, huge thighs, so the feathers can't fully cover the body and they have short lives. This thing only lived about uh, six months and his hips gave out and I had to have him put down. But he had a really good short life. Um, to me, that's just kind of sad that we breed chickens that way. We want, uh, you know, of course, chicken is the number one meat in the U.S. So they have to keep that breeding going quickly. I do respect people that raise their own for healthier and happier chickens. Okay. Egg production is a big part of how you select the breed of the chicken you want. These two are leghorns. They haven't started laying yet, but these are the egg laying machines of the chicken world. They will give one egg a day all year, possibly a couple of eggs on some days. The fancier the chicken, the less eggs. This girl is a very fancy breed, not often seen, and she will lay perhaps one egg a week. And no, the eggs will not be black, although there's some falsehoods out there on the internet. They'll be a kind of a light brown color. And of course, little chicken means little eggs. So you don't really get banties for um, egg laying. And she looks like she's about to go and mold. Her head looks a little rough. So she hasn't laid an egg for probably about two weeks now. These are three older hens that are not laying for different reasons. Miss Yen here, basically she's just gotten up in age and so rarely lays in eggs and may go eggless at any point. B became critically sick. I did some research and was able to save her by draining fluids from her undercarriage. So she is now alive, uh, but she's more of a pet and I do have to check her occasionally to see if that condition redevelops, but she no longer lays eggs. It's okay, Miss B. Blue, you see she looks a fright. Blue is molting. She's getting in her winter feathers. She walks off as I'm talking about her. Chick, 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 come on. Look, listen, I'm opening the pen. Oh, wow, I'm letting you guys out. Better run. Better run. Something else that'll bring Miss Blue over. She loves lettuce. Oh, my gosh, she loves lettuce. So she'll try and steal all the lettuce from everybody else. But she looks a fright. She's molting, getting ready for winter. So um, be aware that touching a chicken when they're molting can be painful because the feathers are very barb-like and will push back against them. When looking at the chicks and deciding which chicks to take home with you, there are certain physical aspects you should pay attention to. 
I don't have any chicks right now to show. So we're gonna look at this drawing. The number one important place to look at a chicken is what's up chicken butt? Check that butt. There are a couple of different reasons to check the chicken butt. If you see any discharge or diarrhea, this chicken may be, this chick may be um, salvageable. It may be able to be raised. It may survive, but it's going to take more work. Look for a chick that has a dry butt. Um, diarrhea can be health problems. It can be worms. It can be, often it's not hatched right, so the chicken may not be, the chick may not be viable. Also, when you're looking at chicks, take a look at the eyes as you would any animal you're considering buying and you wanna look for eyes bright. Finally, look at the beak and mouth. You're looking for discharge. If you see any crustiness or snot bubbles, if they seem like they're having trouble breathing, this is a chick that's gonna take more work. Now, I have taken in sick chickens and had them survive, but more often if they have health problems at the end, beginning, they won't. And it does take a lot more extra work, um, like medicines, and a lot more care <laughs> to get a, a sick chick to live. So it's best to just avoid it entirely at the beginning. Lady Rowana shared a little joke with me not long ago, how when us ladies lay down in bed, we kick up one leg. For some reason, we've got to pull one leg up and one leg is stretched. It struck me as very funny because we see the same thing with the chicks. Uh, I have actually seen this be fairly accurate. When you get chicks, most people going for the eggs are going to mostly want hens. We'll talk about whether you want to roo in there in a moment. Um, but, and this is not foolproof but it's been fairly accurate. If you pick up the chicken, pick up the chicken. If you see the chicken stretch the legs out, you probably have a rooster. If the chicken pulls up the legs like this, you probably have a hen. Someone taught me that, and like I said, it hasn't let me down yet. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Do you want to get a rooster? Um, it it really depends first on your area if you can have a rooster because it is going to crow it's going to crow loudly and the neighbors don't mind then you know that's not a problem for you my neighbors act i'm right in the middle of a neighborhood and my neighbors loved hearing my rooster roosters don't just crow in the morning Roosters crow to establish dominance. They crow to say, this is my place. They crow to say, everything is good. So my rooster would crow in the morning. It would crow in the afternoon when I got home. It would crow all darn day. I had more than one rooster at a time, and they would crow at each other. One would start it, and the others would join in, and the whole yard would be crowing. I had up to four roosters one time. Bless my neighbors. Roosters do serve a purpose with a flock. Roosters' jobs are to watch for danger and let the chickens know if there's something going on. With my, I, I, although I had a few, I think of uh, my big boy. He was as big as a goose. This is just a drawing, but um, he was a well summer, quintessential rooster. And he was as large as a goose. Love that boy. He had five different levels of alarm. He had sounds that he would make when he thought something might be going on. He had sounds when he was pretty sure something was going on. And then he had the five alarms crowing or screaming. I only heard that once in his life. I was inside the house. I heard him set off in a sound I had never heard. I ran out there and a hawk had landed in the yard. It had caught a squirrel. So it didn't catch a chicken, thank goodness. Actually, the hawk would have had a hard time catching a chicken because you couldn't see any. Once he sounded off like that, the chickens all hid. You would have thought I didn't have um, any hens at all. They were under the car. They were, in their, they were underneath their houses. They immediately just um, vacated the area in a rush. 
So that's what the rooster does. The roosters help to keep the peace between hens. If there's a big fight, the rooster will come up and break up the fight, and also they keep them safe. Now, if you want fertilized eggs, you have to have the rooster. If you don't have a rooster, you'll still get the eggs. It's just the roosters help to keep the chickens safe. There are food choices to make. Now, when you've got your babies, uh, you've got choices of organic or medicated. I have just gone to using the med medicated foods. I would rather avoid that. However, I suffer a greater loss of chicks when I don't use the medicated foods. <clears throat> Chickens can have a protozoa in their guts called coccycosis, and that is the bane of the chicken world. Uh, they can get it from the ground. They can get it from wild bird poop. Uh, they can spread it easily amongst each other. So I actually wear different shoes in each of my chicken pens. I've only got two chin pens going right now. Uh, I just assume that the baby chicks have it. And baby chicks are most susceptible to death from coccycosis. I just start everybody on the medicated soap, uh, soap, <laughs> medicated food. Um, so that's my recommendation. The packaging will tell you how long to keep the chicks on that food. Once they reach a certain age, they're, they should be uh, past the age where they're going to get seriously ill with it. If you have a chicken, what I've read is if you have a chicken that's had coccycosis, and I have, and they survive it, that they have some immunity, a level of immunity from it, and they should be safe for the rest of their lives. As birds get older, you have to choose, again, what kind of food to get them. Uh, they've got food for when they're feathering out. They've got foods for pullets. They've got foods for layers. I usually just go to the layer feed. And even then, there's choices of how it's going to look. You can get crumble and you can get pellets. What I've seen is the crumbles create a lot more mess. It, they're more likely to drop it all over the place on the ground. This is easier for them to pick up and swallow. So I go with pellets and they accept it just fine. I usually get the smaller pellets. There are larger pellets also, but I get the smaller kind of pellets because I have at least one small chicken that would struggle with the larger pellets and the larger seem to do just fine with this also. With the feed, do's and don'ts, you also want to provide some grit. Now the grit doesn't, shouldn't be in the feed. The grit should be piled up somewhere in their pen so they can get to it when they want to. They don't have teeth, so they have to have small bits of rock inside of their gullet to churn up and crush up the foods that they swallow. And this is how we do this. You could even get grit that has calcium supplements to help your chickens lay stronger shelled eggs. Something I have learned. Chickens, they love seeds. They love uh, broken up pieces of corn. They love scratch, and that's what that's called. You can buy bags of scratch for the chickens. Don't put the scratch in the feeder with the food. Just don't do it. What will happen is they will toss the food all over the place looking for those little pieces of scratch. And it creates a huge mess and it's a huge waste. I give my chickens scratch as a treat. They don't get it every day. They don't need it every day. In the wintertime, I give them more because it's cold out there and they need to get warmed up but scratch is a treat. When they're out running around, I'll throw some scratch on the ground, um, and that's where they get it as a treat. I wanna talk about biosecurity pre, uh, real quick. Now, I know this looks redneck as hell, but it gives the chickens a lot of space for a cheap price. If I pull back, basically what this is is a $200 outdoor car carport. Um, I bought an extra large tarp for the cover once the original cover wore away and punched holes and I'll have to replace that occasionally. I went ahead and wired it up tightly. Um, there is an issue there. I've got to come back and redo. The big chickens that live here are fairly safe from predators such as uh, possums, but we can never assume. 
And in fact, two baby possums were recently in their laying box next to the two eggs. Um, so I think that's probably what happened. I said babies, they weren't. They were, they measured old enough to be on their own and that's probably why they were in there. I think their mom just dumped them and said, bye kids, good luck. <laughs> you wanna make sure that the chickens do have plenty of space. Of course, most marketable eggs come from chickens that live in a deplorable conditions. I could feel good about my chickens because they do get outdoor time. They get a lot of snacks. They have a good life, so I don't mind eating my eggs. The food, I don't put much food in here at one time, especially this summer has been so wet. I don't want it to become moist from the environment and develop fungus and toxins. So um, I just put a little bit of time. I have to add more food every couple of days. Here's the water. I do add vitamin vitamins to the water. Uh, they eat well, so I don't know if they need it, but it's just something I do. The biggest thing with the water are mosquitoes. The mosquito larva will be in here a couple of times a week, and I have to dump a little bit to get that out. They like to sleep up here. The idea, whoop, sorry, the idea was for them to sleep on the inside, but uh, very few chickens have taken me up on that. They like to sit on top. Basically, the higher the chicken, the safer and more empowered they feel. So I have found these little kid houses make a pretty good chicken shelter. If we had a terrible storm come through, they could get on the inside if they chose to. You really need to clean regularly. I've seen some chicken pens that are just horrible, that they never get clean. You could believe me, there's piles of poop everywhere. This one, I'm ready to clean more extensively, but it's okay. It is okay. I clean up about a, once a week at least. I come and make sure that I sweep up or pick up the uh, messes that I see. Throw down some good hay. Hmm. I'm trying to think of anything else about piles. Oh, my shoes! My shoes. I actually use different pairs of shoes for every pen because every chicken's system can be a little different. While these guys have a certain floor in their gut, other chickens may not have the same one. And if they get exposed to each other's poop, they can make each other sick or even die. So I have specialized shoes for every pen. I just leave these nasty little things outside. I mean, they're not too bad. And I put them on when I come in here, leaving my old shoes, <laughs> my yard shoes you out there. You can use a variety of items for egg boxes. That's an actual egg box that someone built um, just a rustic one that was cheap and she likes to use. This is an old vent that some chickens have actually preferred, work just fine. You can buy chicken boxes. They do like to have a feeling of seclusion when they lay their eggs. So, um, you know, something like this works just fine. They can get in and out quite easily. They've got some hay down on the inside to uh, comfort their bum <laughs> as they lay the eggs and um, they feel safe. Other chickens, it's interesting, when a chicken's laying eggs, often the other chickens just stand by so quietly and almost play guard. Keep your chickens in your yard and away from your neighbor's yards by providing uh, snacks occasionally. Right now they're picking at dried mealworms, sometimes bird seed, bits of fruits, vegetables. They never know when I might come out and toss some snacks, crushed nuts, so that way they stay close to me and they don't bother the neighbors. The neighbors appreciate it. And then the big girls show up and take over. Not happy. Oh, poor baby. The big girls came and took the snackies. I know. You guys got quite a few minutes though. You'll find that there's many products to help with the health of your chicken. One you've th heard me mention a couple of times is diatomaceous earth. Basically, this is a very powdery product. This is pretty much empty. I can't show it to you. So you don't want to put it down when the chickens are in the pen. But once it settles down on the ground, it is safe. Uh, some people even put it in their food. <laughs> I don't think it accomplishes anything there. But what it does is it helps to dry out the atmosphere helping to prevent pests and possibly even bacteria worms in the soil. 
Speaking of worms, I've had one worm incident with my chickens. Uh, they can get them from mosquitoes, they can get them from the ground, eating the wrong bug. So you do need to check the poop. And when I was cleaning up, I noticed worms. So I assumed all the chickens in the pen have it and just did my research and found out that this wormer could be used. Of course, not as much as you would give a horse. So I went ahead and wrote down my math on the bottom and was effectively able to treat those worms and I have not had another incident. There are other items you can get to help your, you know, for prevention to help your chickens remain healthy. There's wound sprays in case they get a wound. Be aware that if a chicken has a bloody spot, other chickens will peck at it and can eventually cause its death. So you do want to separate a wounded chicken with open wounds. Some, if it hasn't healed, um, a weak chicken you want to separate because they will pick on it and they could possibly cause it much harm. Also, sprays to help prevent mosquitoes, mites, lice, um, lice are definitely something you need to keep an eye out for. If you see broken feathers um, around the vent at the back, that's what the part that we call anus, but around the back of the chicken, it is probably lice. If you see uh, feathers coming out in spots, the bird seems to be very disturbed and uncomfortable. It's worth it to check it for lice and mites. If the legs look kind of puffy, like the scales of the leg, um, look kind of puffy, then you want to check for leg mites. These are all common problems and ones I've dealt with. Uh, you can put diatomaceous earth directly on the chicken. You want to, you really don't want the chicken breathing this stuff because it'll go into the lungs. However, you know, occasional treatment. I had a rooster that used to suffer with lice, so I would wait till he's on the perch and sleepy because he was hard to manage and would lift up his wings, put it, get just fluff him up and get it all inside there. And then I would use a mite ointment actually for dogs on the legs and that kept his issues under control. There are many different products out there. Again, um, the internet or backyard chickens is a great resource if you see a problem with your chickens. These two, for some reason, seem to identify with the doves. They like to hang out right here with them. Lady, that's a little racist, don't you think? And it's true that chickens do return to the roost. That's something that I very much like. I just leave the doors open. I'm always nearby in case there's an emergency. If I hear squawking, I'll come running. And um, I let them just put themselves up. Younger chickens tend to stay out a little longer, like these two. They're the last ones to put themselves up. The older hens are the ones that put themselves up the soonest. So, that's a nice thing. I just come out after dark and lock up the pens. I hope this video has been helpful for um, somebody out there considering getting chickens. Uh, I imagine I've probably talked more people out of getting chickens than into. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not something frivolous. Uh, if you get chick, you know, be aware that just like all pets, chickens can be expensive. Uh, just because they're somewhat self-sufficient doesn't mean that they can be ignored. They do take time. They like attention. They like freedom, but they're at risk. Uh, when they're running around from cats. I've had problems with house cats, uh, possums, raccoons, hawks. So, uh, you know, it's something to be researched for first before you, you take that big step. If anyone has any questions or comments, please leave me a message. I want to remind you that this is just what I've learned. Um, what I'm expressing today is no replacement for using your own judgment and doing your own research. Oh wait, somebody has a question. Oh yes, these lovely features that I have. I'll tell you what, those larb fairies, if you can if you can conceive it, they can help you achieve it. Mm hmm Like it? I can assure you, I have confused 
says people with this shirt. <laughs> um, I wanted to give a little information on chicken behavior. Something I've observed and repeatedly, and I've also Googled it, I've looked it up, I haven't seen any mention, so I could be the only one. Chickens communicate that we're good by flapping their wings three or four times. When I walk by my hens, they flap at me. I have seen chickens almost get into a fight and one of them will flap several times and the other one walks off. Included with this is a little video of two roosters and I laugh because what's happening is there's a big blue hen, Miss Big Blue. She's the big rooster's best girl. He walks off and here comes this little rooster because he's got a crush on her. He starts to talk to her and the big rooster sees it, doesn't like it. He starts heading over there and you'll see the little rooster turn and go and then he walks away. And what he has said is, okay, she's your girl. I get it. We're good. The big rooster accepts that and there's no fight. So check that out.